Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Habib, welcome. It's a very special edition of Habibi Power Hour Plus. This is your host, Siraj Hashmi. That's right. My name is Siraj Hashmi. Ajahi Kobe, my co host. Currently busy. Um, he had to take the night off to get his bussy waxed. Um, it's a small, small price to pay for uh, the, the, the sheer smoothness of that bussy. But, but uh, before, before we get into everything, everything as, as always, always, you can find me on Twitter, at Siraj A. Hashmi, where you can really find the uh, purest of shit posts. Of course, if you really want to support uh, me and Jay, you can go ahead and join our locals community. Uh, a bunch of links in the description of this uh, episode. I will, I will be, be uploading this to the podcast if you really want to torture yourself by listening to this uh, afterwards. And of course, um, uh, what was I going to say? Obviously, a Shana Tova to all the Jew BBs out there. Um, hope you have a very happy and restful new year. Um, it's been a long time coming. And of course, uh, my... For those of you who've uh, reached out to me about the Hurricane Ian in Florida, that's because where that's where my wife and I live now, and Ern, King Ern, behind me. Um, obviously, we are uh, we we're, we're doing okay. Uh, I'm not in Florida at the moment. Uh, my wife and I are uh, with the in-laws traveling um, uh, for for the Rosh Hashanah holiday because obviously she's she's Jewish. Um, but uh, I, I am, as a Florida man, um, a bit jealous that um, y'all are having so much fun without us. I'm kidding. Uh, obviously, very. My it's it's a it's a weird thing because I am obviously I want to be there, but I realize it's probably not a good idea to be there. Um, so. In, in solidarity, solidarity with, with my, my Florida peeps, my heart is out going, going out to you. Hope all of you uh, stay safe. Um, your power doesn't get knocked out. If it does, I hope that it comes back quickly and that whatever the storm has in store for us, um, that we all get through it. So, um, Hobby says I have an echo. Oh, that's a good, good son of a bitch. All right, how about now? Thank you, Javi. Javi says I have an echo. Wow, do I need to start that over again because of, you know, fuck it. Let's just start over again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Habibis, welcome to the stream. I'm literally going to do this all over again uh, because I had an echo. This is a very special edition of a BB Power Hour. I'm your host, Siraj Hashmi. Um, I did say before that my co-host, Mujahi Kobe, a.k.a. J. Uh, who is, you can find on Twitter at Asslickin, um, had to take time off to get his bussy waxed. Um, if you have to look that up, uh, there's not much I can say to help you. Um, but uh, this is a family program, so I will let uh, the parents listening to this with their children, um, I offer you the opportunity to pause this show right now to turn to your child and tell them exactly what a bussy is and why it's getting waxed. So, uh, Hurricane Ian <clears throat> has made landfall in Florida. <clears throat> Obviously, appreciate everyone who has reached out to me and to my wife to just check in on us. We are not currently in Florida. We actually got the hell out of Dodge like a week and a half ago. Um, a little bit of business, a little bit of the Rosh Hashanah holiday. I am not Jewish, but my wife is. So, we celebrate the Jewish New Year. So Shanata uh, Shanatova to all the Jew BBs out there. Um, it's a very uh, it's a weird week because it's, you know it's very happy for the you know Jewish New Year, but then boom, here comes Hurricane Ian, and basically it seems like the apocalypse is nigh. So, um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a strange strange time. Obviously, um, a lot of pressing stories happening, um, and. Uh, obviously, the the one that is most concerning 
is a Florida reporter using a condom on their mic. Look, as a woman in today's day and age, you got to be prepared for whatever, all right? Um, I'm just surprised that anyone could hear her um, with that condom on, on the mic. Um, it would be really unfortunate if, like, she just put it on and, you know, the, um, the mic immediately got malfunctioned. I mean, someone's been messing with those condoms, right? Oh, man. So, wait, hold up. Coolio just died? No. Coolio? See, this is what happens. Holy. Coolio just died. That is. No. At 59. <sighs> R.I.P. Uh, used to listen to him all the time in Pakistan. Elementary school. Man. Oh, man. So, back to the news. Now, of course, that's not the most important story. The most important story, uh, besides a reporter putting a condom on her mic, um, I mean, I would be, if, if I were still a journalist, I would be out there, I'd be the only reporter out there with a full-on big black dildo. You know, in solidarity with the gays, right? No, but the biggest story, um, at least <clears throat> this whole shit show of this Category 4 hurricane barreling on Florida is the political angle because that's pretty much the, the angle that everyone seems to, to, to live by and die, die by. Now you got this uh, reporter from CNN, Steve Contorno, tweeting, As DeSantis prepares Floridians for Ian, he is urging residents to heed advice from the same local leaders he suggested they ignore during COVID and praising a federal agency he previously alleged withheld aid to the state because Biden was playing politics. And Rory Metzger says, Why does it seem so many people are rooting for a hurricane. Yes, that's exactly what it seems. You have the Daily Beast over here writing an article saying, DeSantis cares about deaths from Hurricane Ian, just not from COVID. You have uh, Ali Velshi and Joy Reid discussing climate change during the storm, saying we're going to have to come to terms with the fact that that's going to be a, the major cause for migration around the world and here in America. Do I really want to watch this clip? Do I really want to do that? You know, just to pick up, I don't know if you could hear Bill. Oh, God, it's a three-minute clip. They're not listening to that shit. You got Amy Klobuchar suggesting that voting, dem voting for Democrats will actually help stop hurricanes, saying that's why we've got to win. Let's see if we can actually get a little... This is much shorter. Oh, but of course, I can't hear it because I muted the site. Let's unmute that. And a bipartisan basis and we have done many many things on a bipartisan basis and one the president never gave up he is persistent and two you've got leaders in congress uh, like um uh, senator schumer and uh speaker pelosi as well as their republicans that want to work with them where we have been able to step by step by step push these bills through and so um i think so many times people counted us out but we want to make clear we've got the backs of the american people and while we have clear disagreements we don't want if the republicans take charge a number of them have been talking about an abortion ban you guys know that you featured on the yeah. show that's why we've got to win this midterm we just did something about climate change for the first time in decades that's why we've got to win this as that hurricane bears down on florida we got to win in the midterms we understand that but none of that has stopped us from deciding we're going to put our differences aside and get some things done Okay, so I thought I thought that was, that was taken out of context in the sense that she was talking that we got to win this in relation to the abortion ban, but then she immediately comes out and says, "And we got to do we got to fight fight climate change. That's why we got to win this." As a hurricane comes barreling towards Florida, look, there is, and I you know this sounds very 
cynical and it sounds kooky, but I feel like at this point we've sort of run out of conspiracy theories because all the other conspiracy theories have come true. But this one is kind of kind of low hanging fruit because uh, it's and it's kind of true. Like there are people out there who legitimately want the body count to skyrocket in Florida. They want the damage to be so bad in Florida simply to own Ron DeSantis and to try to you know hurt his chances of winning his gubernatorial reelection campaign this November and hurting his chances of running and possibly winning uh, the presidency in 2024. Now, look, uh, I, I, I don't know where this mindset comes from. I, it's not like I look at New York and I think, oh, I want everyone in New York to die because I can't stand Andrew Cuomo. Like, no. If anything, like in 2020, when COVID was absolutely rocking New York City and killing tens of thousands of people in 2020, especially, it was not, be, it was not, I didn't want, I, I hated, I started to hate Andrew Cuomo because he let so many people die because of his handling of COVID-19, because he put so many people, sick COVID patients in nursing home facilities and adult care facilities that killed even more people and basically try to cover that shit up. It was the opposite. It was, it, it was the deaths that, and the mishandling of COVID-19 that basically led me to disdain and loathe Andrew Cuomo, or Cuomo, just to, as a shout out to Jay, who is RIP, RIP in peace. But look, it would be one thing if, uh, the, if it just like existed in the vacuum, but and Twitter is not obviously real life, um, but it just it just something really just doesn't sit right with me on this, and I am not entirely sure why anyone in the right mind would endorse a natural disaster via Hurricane Ian to basically defeat their political opponent is just, the shit ain't a game. There are people who are going to die. There are people who probably already have died. There are people who are, I mean, there was a boat off the coast of uh, Florida that I think uh, three people were rescued and 20 people are still missing. So they're pres I guess they're only presumed to be dead. I mean, this is real, this is real shit. This ain't a fucking game. I want to hear it happen. I, I want to hear what you Habibis in the chat have to say. I mean, this is, I don't want to have to like uh, rant for a whole hour, although I can if you really want me to. Why am I going to Rumble? I want to go to Twitter. I want to, I want to go see the crazy shit that's happening right now. Everyone talking about Coolio. God damn it. Why is, why does Coolio have to die? Ugh. See, this is Naples, Florida. This is just awful. Uh, there's my co-host right there. He is unable to join the stream, but don't, it never, never leaves an opportunity to not shit post saying, <laughs> if you don't believe in climate change, how can you explain the wind and it changing directions randomly? <laughs> <laughs> now there, there, I mean, let's just go back to that readout thing just because I really want to see how bad, how bad this shit is. You know, just to pick up, I don't know if you could hear Bill, um, Ali, but, you know. I did, yeah. There is a lot that has changed about the earth that has made these things worse, right? I mean, these things are thriving yep. because the water is getting warmer. And I think when people, we stopped calling yep. it global warming for political reasons, but that's what it is, right? Our earth is getting warmer. And there is just no doubt, I think, left that it is feeding these beasts, 
Well, and, and what you where it comes out is in the intensity. The people say, well, there have been hurricanes for millennia. Well, that's true. Uh, but we, we sometimes get these ones that are so much more damaging and so much more intense. And then there's the complicating factor that in places like uh, Bill was just talking about, the St. John's River in Florida, Savannah, Charleston. Charleston, like Miami, gets water that comes up on a, on a good sunny day. That's climate change because water levels are rising. So on one hand, you have uh, more intense storms because of warm weather and the pattern that cause these storms to, to form. And then you've got greater damage because we've got a, a rising water levels. And it, it's good that we talk about these things in the moment because lots of times in, over the years when I brought it up, people have said, oh, now's not the time to talk about That's it. Right. Now's the time to talk about it because the only time people are paying attention to how damaging these things are. And that does mean taking into account how you build things and how you yeah. account for it, which is fine in places like Naples here where you can build stuff that's off the ground. But what about in poor areas where people That's don't right. have the money to rebuild? What about what happened in, uh, in, in New Orleans during Katrina? So this is why we have to think about climate change in relation to severe weather, in relation to how people can actually mitigate it. And by the way, Ali, you know, we talk a lot about all of these things as separate stories. You do a brilliant job. Everybody, if you guys are watching Bellsy every weekend, you're really missing out because Ali brings all of this stuff together. We're talking about when migration is happening around the world. A lot of that is also driven by this stuff. You know, as these um, places yep. that we've chosen to live or where people have no choice but to live become inhospitable, what do people do? They move. Yes. If it's inside Florida, when you've got to run from that water, you need to move. You need to move inland. You need to go inland. When okay, uh, just real quick, I'd like to point out here because um, I, I don't think they see the irony of, of all of this because um, given the fact that, you know, they think climate change is what's causing people to move. No, it's fucking authoritarian governments, governmental policies like what they did during COVID. That has caused the most amount of migration especially within the country climate change is not forcing people to move it's basically people's freedoms what the fuck are these people these i told myself i won't curse i know it's a family show let's just let's just continue listening to this that's katrina totally happened right. people moved they went to houston some of them did not go back we're not saying that's yep. going to happen now but the reality right. is that humans we're literally running from what the climate from the climate change that we're pretending isn't happening but we're physically being moved totally around right. the earth because of it it will actually be the single biggest cause of migration. We typically yes. think of migration being caused by conflict and wars and things like yep. that. Uh, in Syria, it triggered it. In, in Ukraine, that's not going to be what it is. It's actually going to be migration because people can't move. Generally speaking, prosperous people can move first because they yep. can afford to. But eventually, yep. when the grain stops growing or the fields keep flooding, the poor people move too. And we're going to have to come to terms with the fact that that's going to be the major cause for migration around the world and here in America. It is really yeah. hard to live in places that get hit by tornadoes and get yep. hit by hurricanes on an ongoing basis. You can't make a living out of it. So well, we, that, that is a really, really important and necessary consideration. We, I gotta have you come back because we could do a whole hour too on where like people with money choose to live because they choose to live in some precarious situations too that are like yeah. low, 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 low to the ground and are not enough yeah. off the earth to survive this stuff. It's a whole nother topic though. We'll do that another day. Stay safe, my friend. You're brilliant. Thank you. Bobby says, the earth rotates, thus moving everyone around. Checkmate climate deniers. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm not saying people don't move become, because of climate change, but uh, I, I, think we, I think we underestimate the real causes of people uh, moving and migrating to other parts of the world or other parts of the country. I mean, uh, look, I... I'm not saying I moved because of COVID to Florida from DC, but I did move because of what initially was my wife getting a job down in Florida. I moved because obviously I wanted to be with her. And once I got there, you know, thinking like, oh man, I haven't been. I haven't been to the Gulf Coast of Florida ever before last year. I got down there and I, before going down, I thought, man, there's, no, there's no way that like people live on like the Gulf Coast of Florida. Like there's, there's nothing there. Like I, I grew up 
knowing only the East Coast, knowing Miami, knowing, you know, the Space Coast, knowing Orlando, although Orlando's in the middle of the state, not really considered part of either coast. And thinking like, oh, that's where all the people are. Who do, who Who is honestly living in the Gulf Coast? So we went down to Sarasota and thinking like, who the, who the hell lives in Sarasota? But once I got there, like maybe like a day or two after, I, I like, I understood like I'm, it clicked so uh, so, f it clicked so quickly. I was like, "Oh, this is why people live here." I don't know what it is. It's it's something in the air, something in the soil. You get there and just like everything, you're like you're at peace with everything. It's a, it's it's, it's kind of insane. Um, but yeah, I I love living down in Florida. Uh, there are some people who tell me like, <laughs> even even like my mom being like. I can never, I can never live in Florida. Like, honestly, I don't care what one way or another whether you decide you want to move to Florida or not. Uh, it's a great state. Uh, people drag it unnecessarily way too much. Sure, they're crazy people. I mean, look, uh, <laughs> look at me. I'm probably uh, counted among them. But it's a good spot. It's a great state. Uh, definitely don't take it for granted. So obviously, uh, everything with Hurricane Ian, you know, all the politicization that people are making uh, about, you know, climate change or Ron DeSantis, like, look, whatever your politics may be, I would want the best for you, regardless of what you think of me or anything else. So I think that's, I, I feel like, there are more people who think like me than think like them. There are not people out there who are very much Ali Belch. Oh God, sorry, that was that was that was a mistake. There are tons of people who prefer not to divide and actually want to connect with people. Um, I mean, this the fact that you have people like Steve Contorno trying to find this like hypocrisy from Ron DeSantis talking about two completely separate things, one about COVID and vaccines and the other about a hurricane, something that hurt that, that Floridians are very familiar with. It's not like hurricanes have not hit the state of Florida before. I don't know where people are getting this thinking that, Oh, uh, cast doubt on what they're telling you about COVID, but make sure you trust them when it comes to hurricanes. Like the two ain't the same. They're just not. And I don't know I don't know if this is like like there are people who are saying what what's the what's that uh Vinland's uh wife? What's the what's her name? Hold on, I need to pull this up first. Look at this shit. This is uh Bill Weir on CNN basically going after blaming everything on global warming. Uh, Ian is coming. Ian's here. John, we just felt a marked increase in wind speeds within the last 10 minutes or so. We were riding about 40, 50 miles an hour. It was hard to fathom that speed tripling in the next few hours, but we're now getting maybe 70 mile an hour gusts here. We're right at the point where US 43 heads uh, across the Peace River here. I'm just in front of the memorial for Hurricane Charlie, which in 2004 devastated this town and sent a wake-up call to this community about the threats of living on the coast in a rapidly warming planet. Uh, as a result of that storm, they were the first community in Florida to put in a climate adaptation plan, a sea level, coastal resiliency plan that they're, you know, have been working on for years now. And this will be the test. Uh, it's hard to build power lines or, or building codes for 17-foot storm surge, though. That's the the crazy variable here right now. No one has ever seen that, so we don't know what that looks like, but this is exactly what climate scientists have been warning about for a long time, and now we get to see it all close. John? Um, one thing I'd like to know is that there's no condom on this dude's microphone, so he's he's definitely going to get blown away by, the, by Hurricane Ian. I mean, this woman has it right, okay? If you don't want your microphone sucked and absolutely swallowed by Hurricane Ian, 
Got to gotta wrap it up tight. That's what I'm telling you. Uh, Raven and Files, Ravens and Flies says, LOL, Hurricane is like the coof. Piss on my leg and tell me it's raining. I'll believe you harder. I stayed in southwest Louisiana for Katrina. God damn. Uh, where's that stop sign to the face when you need it, says Lord Master. Yeah, there was another, uh, there was a, let's see, there was a reporter who got absolutely walloped. I think I have it right here. Look at this shit. Uh, this is Jim Cantor getting hit by a flying tree branch. Hey, just came flying by. Oh. All right, you know what? <laughs> I think I'm just going to come in here for a second. This is in Punta Gorda. That's like 45 minutes south of where, Give me a second. where I live. I'm alright, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just, you just can't stand up. Jeez. Alright. All right, I'm, I'm gonna let you guys look at the pictures, okay? These weather people, man. <laughs> Uh, I'm watching, I'm watching this shit the entire day thinking there's no fucking way anyone is that stupid that they would, that they would, uh, just go out of there and put their body in harm's way. This is downtown Fort, or maybe not downtown Fort Myers, but Fort Myers, a webcam time lapse. Just watch how, uh, quickly this deteriorates and you think you're safe, right? You think it's all going to be okay? <laughs> Look at this shit. Let's zoom in here. Let's see if we can... That is insane. Insane. And look at that. Look at that little, little that dude basically coming out. Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> Yo, it is... It's crazy out there. It's crazy. Um, man. Gotta be safe. Gotta be safe. Um, before we get on to the next... Uh, the next segment. This week... I said I'd do this for Mary because I'm flying solo. Mary is Jay's mom. Uh, and I said I'd do this because uh, this is the final week of Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, meaning it is the final episode of the month of September of a BB Power Hour. And this is a BB Power Hour special edition. So obviously, um, you know, so obviously I, I got to give a shout out to, to Mary. Um, basically, to give you an idea uh, of of sort of just a quick little bit about Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, I just wanted to plug a few uh, foundations uh, and charities that um, are currently in the fight against childhood cancer. Um, and, you know, there are tons of people who are out there who are talking about all these different causes and whatnot. Like, I, I think it's safe to say of all of, like, the causes you could get yourself involved with, trying to eradicate childhood cancer is probably um, the chief among them. I would say definitely. I, of course, I can't think of all the different causes off the top of my head, but, you know, there's, like, a, a, a awareness or activist, like, Olympics, and everyone's trying to raise money for whatever just so happens that the possibility that like all of us are going to die from climate change seems to be at the forefront of most people's minds. So what I wanted to do tonight was just to uh, highlight a few of these foundations. Um, now, CureFest he, was this past week. Now, um, Mary actually got a chance to go. It's one of the more somber events in, in the sense that, um, you know, families are telling the stories that they've, they went through with childhood cancer, um, and it's almost always horrific. Um, kids dying way too young, um, and usually not understanding why these things are happening to them. So 
well, I'll put, I'll put the, the links to these different foundations in the description of this episode. Just wanted to highlight a few, uh, such as Arms Wide Open Childhood Cancer Foundation, which is uh, specifically their mission to fund less toxic therapies for children with cancer so they can have a better quality of life as they battle the disease and to give ch children battling cancer and their families hope during the most difficult days of their lives. Then we have the Angels for Change. Now, Angels for Change, is their mission uh, is specifically to fix the pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical chain, su uh, supply chain and end the drug shortages. And that's because pediatric drugs are 80% more likely to go into shortages and stay in shortages 50% longer than any other essential medication simply because it doesn't really profit the pharmaceutical companies. And this is like kind of like, if you want to make that tie in to COVID right here, it's because uh, what we're seeing with COVID uh, and the vaccines and the constant boosters, think of how like Pfizer and Moderna, and even Johnson & Johnson, how much money they're pocketing off of these COVID vaccines. It's like they created, a, a, an, intentionally created uh, a shitty therapeutic to just try to make a shit ton of money off of. It's crazy. It's crazy. Now I want to also highlight One Voice Foundation, which offers 25 different programs for pediatric cancer uh, families in Tampa Bay. Uh, that's actually right by where, where I am. Um, and they uh, fund and operate the only private pediatric cancer research lab in Tampa Bay um, uh, and under the direction of Cameron, Cameron Tebby. A uh, doctor who is developing the vaccine for leukemia. Um, here I am railing against vaccines, uh, specifically COVID vaccines, and here I am promoting a <laughs> foundation that's where well, they're specifically working on a vaccine uh, for leukemia. I like to point out, uh, although, look, I think vaccines are good, uh, vaccines are effective. Um, I just don't really trust the vaccine that they're pushing on us now. And I think uh, everyone should do their own due diligence and figure out, honestly, what's best for them. We just saw this past week a story about mRNA uh, uh, vaccine, the mRNA vaccine being transferred through the breast milk of uh, uh, n uh, new mothers to their, to their newborns. Um, and uh, I still don't know what to make of that. Finally, I want to highlight Smashing Walnuts. Smashing Walnuts, uh, which is uh, a, a foundation that Gabriella Miller, who was uh, nine years old when she was diagnosed with DIPG, which is an inoperable brain tumor the size of a walnut, um, they began Smashing Walnuts to cope with the emotional distress, and it's basically designed to raise awareness for DIPG. Um, Gabriella was, uh, was only 10 years old when she passed away in 2013. So uh, Habibi's, uh, I'll put uh, links in the description of this video so you can go check those foundations out. And if you're, uh, if you're feeling generous and want to make a donation, uh, obviously these are some, some good foundations to look into um, because obviously no one should have to go through anything like this. Uh, all right, shifting gears. I got to take off my shirt because I'm really hot. Um, so stand by. Okay, Habibis. All right, so uh, President Joe Biden this past, uh, what, day? Uh, basically coming out here and saying, honestly, one of the craziest things that any president has ever said and that is, this man can literally speak to the dead. That's right. You heard it. Joe Biden is a character in the sense, sixth sense. That motherfucker can see dead people. Um, I hope everyone uh, who didn't see this sees this now. Because holy shit, President Biden. And if Jackie hold on, hold on. I wish we have a, do we have a, do we have a longer clip? I hope we have a longer clip. We'll watch some of it. We'll watch this little clip. Jackie Walorski, as a rep, 
Republican congresswoman who passed away, died in the car accident tragically in August. Here is Joe Biden specifically asking, where, where's Jackie? Where the fuck is Jackie? Listen to this. Representative, Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here to help make this a reality. Okay, that's, that's just the, that's the first, first bit. Let's, let's, let's see how White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. What happened? Let's just, I, I just want you to like get the full context. This is, this is the response when asked about it. Just check this out. What happened in the hunger event today? The president appeared to look around the room uh, for an audience member, a member of Congress who passed away last month. He seemed to indicate she might be in the room. What, so, what happened there? so the president was, uh, as you all know, you guys were watching uh, today's event of and was acknowledging her incredible work. Representative Jackie, are you here? He said, Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? She must not be here. Uh, um, you know, this was an, what we were able to witness today and what the president was able to lift up uh, in this, uh, at this conference, at this event, uh, was how her, uh, her focus on um, wanting to... Uh, uh, and this is something that he was lifting up and honoring. Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Why, why was he looking for her? I'm not, I'm not trying to be snarky here. But no, I mean, I, and I'm... Between no, what you were saying and what he said there. And again, I think people can understand. I think the American people out there who, you know, watch the briefing uh, from time to time, maybe at this moment, will understand when someone is at top of mind. Uh, again, I don't think it's all that unusual. Representative Jackie, are you here? Top of mind. All right, I wish this clip wasn't so edited, but we're just gonna we're just explain gonna where the we're just gonna watch it anyways because it, it it really it bears repeating just how senile our president is. Again, I don't think it's all that unusual. Representative Jackie, are you here? Explain where the mistake was made. Did the president was the president confused? Was something written in the teleprompter that he didn't recognize? Can you just help us understand what happened? I mean, you're jumping to a lot of conclusions. Seen, no, but you're... But, find but out I, what happened here. I, no, I hear you, Stephen. I'm, I'm answering the question that you're jumping to a lot of conclusions. Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Uh, what I have said is that she was on top of mine and that he is going to see her family in just two days' time. Representative Jackie, are you here? I don't think that's any... That's unusual. I feel like many of us have gone through uh, that particular, uh, you know, time where someone is on top of mind and you call them out. Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Green, I have John Lennon okay. top of mind. Just... Hold on, hold on, let's, let's listen to that a little. I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. Green, I have John Lennon okay. top of mind just about every day, but I'm not looking around for him anyway. <laughs> when you sign a bill for John Lennon, Lennon as president, then we can have this conversation. Why? Okay. Representative Jackie, are you here? Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be. Hold on, let's rewind to that one part. Uh, that particular, uh, you know, time where someone is on top of mind and you call them out. Where's Jackie? I didn't think she was, she was going to be here. No, all right. So there was a part of a part of her, the part of her answer, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but. Part of her answer said, that's not unusual at all. Like, that's not weird. That's fucking weird, okay? That's weird as shit. No one is, like, looking for a dead person within the room that they're in saying, hey, where are you? Look, I, look, I, maybe Joe Biden is just so close to death that he could see everyone on the other side. Maybe we should extend, to, maybe we should think of that possibility. Joe Biden is just literally, uh, he is just, for some reason, being injected with epinephrine and cocaine. And every day, that's the only way he can get up. And then by the time he hits the, confer you know, the press conference, this guy is crashing and burning. Look. I don't know if he's actually at this point, and, and I, <laughs> it's funny. I I was literally just looking at one of these tweets that uh, I posted, but it, it I highlighted this 
um, earlier because Jay, who is um, also brain dead because he's getting his bussy waxed, says, if you don't believe in climate change, how can you explain wind and it changing directions randomly? This tweet of mine seems to be an evergreen sort of tweet saying, I love that we've come to the point, as a society, that you actually have to think long and hard as to whether this is a shit post or not. And the reason why I love that we've come to this point as a society is because I just can't tell anymore. I cannot tell if people are truly just trolling the shit out of me and everyone else, or they actually legitimately believe this stuff. Um, well, for Jay, I know, I know Jay doesn't believe this. But I wouldn't be surprised if he does. Um, in any event, that's kind of how I feel about Joe Biden and what the Democrats are doing in general. I legitimately don't know if they believe what they say they believe or if they're doing it just to drive me insane and the rest of the country insane. Like, it is one of those things where... <laughs> Look, I'm, I, I am, I'm in a much better place mentally. But a year ago, <laughs> Siraj Hashmi would have taken a gun and shot himself. Okay? But even if I shot myself in the head, I would still have more brain matter than Joe Biden. Think about that. Let that sink in. So we've come to that point. Um, I have uh, like one more story that I wanted to, to harp on, and that is something I, lo I know little to nothing about. So I want to talk about this Nord Stream sabotage, these Nord Stream blasts, okay? And I'm hoping that by uh, exposing my o own ignorance, um, I can... Uh, learn something, a thing or two about this. So the Nord Stream gas pipeline had suffered a mysterious leak. Now, the root cause of this leak, I have no idea. Um, there are many things that could have happened that have led to this point in time. Um, and we still don't know the root cause of this leak, whether if it was an, an intentional sabotage um, from one party or another. Um, you have to think that if there is some level of sabotage, there's a pretty good chance internationally that the CIA had a hand in it. Um, and let's be honest, it's not like it's not like the United States government is incapable of doing such things. Now, what's the most odd about this is oh, one of the things that have come out of it, and I don't know if it's actually stated in this article, I just kind of pulled this article out at random, uh, is that the there have been some who have suggested that the Russian military is the russians are responsible for sabotaging their own pipeline and here's why i tell you that shit don't make sense because if one of the main ways that russia is able to even fund its war in ukraine is by nord stream gas money why the fuck would you sabotage it that makes no sense. Zero. And it's not just one pipeline. It's two, as Lore Master points out to me. It, this shit does not make sense, okay? Why would Russia sabotage their own pipelines? It does not make sense. The New York, uh, New York Times says the pipeline break looks deliberate, Europeans say, exposing vulnerability. Uh, you think? Of course it's deliberate. But the idea that the Russians are somehow responsible for their own natural gas pipeline leaks, 
is kind of defies logic. Now, that's not to say that Russia did sabotage their own pipelines. They certainly could have. I'm just saying that the likelihood of that, given what we've seen, seems quite small. So whether it's accidental or not, I think we can all tell that that shit wasn't accidental. But someone wants this war to end and someone wants it to end as soon as possible. And I am, look, I'm not naming names here, but um, usually it's the three leather agencies that have pull, pull the strings around the world, okay? Uh, Loremaster has a question saying, question is, does Ukraine itself have the capacity to do this? I don't know if Ukraine has the possibility to do this, but given how the entire world has backed Ukraine without actually getting itself involved, getting you know their, themselves involved officially in the war against Russia, uh, against the Russian or pushing back the Russian invasion, I would not be surprised if people took it upon themselves, uh, who did have the capacity to do it, to just go ahead and do it. Um, that certainly makes more sense. Now, <laughs> Javi says, do you mean EPA? <laughs> if only, it was <laughs> watch it be fucking Greenpeace that did this shit. Greenpeace sabotages the Nord Stream pipelines. <laughs> I can see it happen now. Greenpeace behind, Greenpeace is basically partnered with ISIS and Al-Qaeda to, to shut off the, the gas spigots that are funding the, the Ukrainian invasion or the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, we got, I, I, I was going to do this for uh, the stream for an hour. Uh, so I, look, if you guys got questions, hit me up in the chat. I, I know there's a lot going on in the world right now. Uh, obviously, my attention has mostly been focused on everything with respect to a condom being on a fucking microphone. God damn. You know what's sad, too? That microphone's probably at least six times bigger than mine. So sad. So sad. Janice asks, where's Ernie? Well, it's just me right now. And so I don't want to, like, abandon you mid-episode because I got to, like, grab let, let me tell you this let's say this once i get to 60 minutes into this show i will go ahead and get ernie okay can y'all y'all can bear with me on that so um still what hobby says i'm I, i'm alone on the stream is what i'm trying to say okay all right. If Ernie had the ability to like come downstairs, I'd just get him right now. Okay. Now it's looking more and more like a conversation, just because uh, I'm just talking to the the audience. Uh, not Papa P on Rumble says, "Can Emily confirm your lack of mic size?" I hate everyone. I hate literally everyone. But yeah, she probably could to answer your question. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, oh, one other thing uh, I forgot to cover uh, because everyone seems to be focused on this. I don't actually know where the fuck this came from, but apparently the AP is already on top of it because uh, apparently it needed to be said. And that is uh, a response to hurricane disa natural disasters um, that the best thing you can do uh, to prepare yourself is to get vaccinated. Now, this is a 2021 comment that President Biden made in basically calling people in Florida, I'm sorry, not in Florida, but in August 2021, that when discussing the preparedness during hurricane season amid the pandemic, that uh, Biden urged people in hurricane-prone states to get vaccinated in case they need to evacuate or stay in the shelter, but he did not suggest vaccines could protect people from hurricanes. Um, I don't know who has been promoting this, um, but I 
do find it interesting that it has come to <laughs> come to people's attention now, given the fact that uh, in the middle of this like devastating hurricane in Florida, the last fucking thing anyone is thinking about is boy, did they get vaccinated? Oh shit. Fuzzy says, Siraj, let's show Fuzzy some skin. Let's see those tank top muffins. You got it, Habibi. There you go, Habibi. Got to give you some skin, all right? Okay, it's a work in progress. I've been posting gym selfies, and I just obviously want to show you the progress I've made. Jan says, Aaron Judge finally hits uh, home run number 61. Congratulations, Aaron Judge. Big accomplishment. Um, what is the first, uh, first, one, first player in the, in the American League to do it since Roger Maris? It's a pretty big deal. Man, that would really suck if uh, the Yankees uh, did not win the World Series in light of that uh, massive accomplishment. Uh, Janice then follows up by saying eight away from nice. Look, if Aaron Judge gets to 69 home runs, uh, obviously I got to give him the biggest props um, and probably offer to um, carry his baby. Uh, Fuzzy says, now rub them together, Siraj. No, I will not do that, Fuzzy, okay? That's for locals. Only, Habibi. Um, one thing I, I forgot to mention about this whole oil pipeline, Nord Stream 2 pipeline, Nord Stream 1 and 2 pipeline, sorry. And look, this could be completely, this can be completely wrong, okay? Completely wrong. German economy minister Habeck. So speculations about the reason for Nord Stream 1 leak are currently forbidden. Let's look into this a bit deeper, shall we? <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's going to... Let's see. Nord Stream... Uh, okay, I'm not seeing anything recent. No one reported on it. So there's either a media blackout or, well, let's see if, if, if Robert Hebeck knows what's up. Uh, there's only one mention of Hebeck, so I literally can only rely on the tweet, a single tweet uh, about this whole... Uh, game. Look, I have no idea if this is true. I did not hear from the person uh, himself. I, even if I did hear it from himself, he'd probably speak it in German, and I don't understand German, so what the fuck do I know, right? That being said, I think it's important to realize that while there is a weird, strange media blackout on a lot of stories that are actually really important, um, it, just the fact that there is a media blackout on certain stories becomes a story in and of itself. It's not always the crime, but the cover-up. It's always the cover-up that's worse than the crime. So, what I'm saying is, just be very careful what you read out there. I mean, just this past uh, week, we had the uh, Italian elections, okay? We had Italian elections, and apparently Italy elected its next Mussolini for some fucking reason, okay? George, uh, Georgia Mal Maloney, Georgia Maloney, uh, who... Uh, Leads, I say it's the, was it Faith, Family, God, what's the name of the party, party again? And it's just going to drive me nuts. 
Uh, she's an incoming Italian prime minister. Anyone remember the name of the party? I'm trying to look this shit up. Georgia Maloney. She is the... Everyone's just calling her basically the next, next Mussolini. Literally anybody right of, of uh, Stalin is either Hitler or Mussolini. Uh, she leads the Brothers of Italy. Brothers of Italy. Thank you, Rory. Um, Brothers of Italy, uh, everyone's saying that she is uh, 100% Nazi, a Nazi collaborator. Look, watch this, watch this video, okay? This is a video that YouTube removed. Let's see if it still plays. Hold on, hold on one second. Let's see if we could get it on YouTube. Okay, just just watch this because this is this is a video that I shit you not was removed. It was a 2019 speech, and it was a speech that Maloney made about family. And not Papa not Papa P on Rumble says she quoted Chesterton. That's based AF. Let's just let's just let's just watch this, okay? Potrei farne tante altre di queste domande. A monte c'è quella che ci facciamo oggi. Perché la famiglia è un nemico? Perché la famiglia fa così paura? C'è una risposta unica per tutti. Hold on. I, I feel like I should, uh, for those of you who probably aren't, or are probably listening to this after, let's just go ahead and I will translate. I will read the captions that she's saying, okay? This is about what we are doing here today. Why is the family an enemy? Why is the family so frightening? I'm going to turn her volume down just so you guys can hear me. This is about what we are doing here today. Why is the family an enemy? Why is the family so frightening? There is a single answer to all these questions. Because it defines us. Because it is our identity. Because everything that defines us is now an enemy. For those who would like us to no longer have an identity and to simply be perfect consumer slaves. Hold on. Before I keep going, consumer slaves, uh, I, 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 interestingly enough, uh, like the Media Matters crowd that have been watching and following along and basically become Italian, uh, pol uh, Italian politics experts, which, of course, I am because I'm speaking on it, therefore I'm an expert, uh, you should know that they are highlighting this particular part, consumer slaves, as being an anti-Semitic dog whistle, okay? Anti-Semitic dog whistle. I don't have any fucking clue what she's saying right now because I don't speak Italian, but based on this translation, this is somehow an anti-Semitic dog whistle. Will anybody tell me whether or not... I mean, first of all... You, Let's just keep watching. Okay. And so they attack national identity. They attack religious identity. They attack gender identity. They attack family identity. I can't define myself as Italian, Christian, woman, mother. No. I must be citizen X, gender X, parent one, parent two. I must be a number. Because I am no, because when I'm only a number, when I no longer have an idea. Oh, God damn it, Siraj. Slow ass. Because when I am only a number, when I am no longer, when I no longer have an identity or roots, and I will be the perfect slave at the mercy of financial speculators. That's the line right there. That's the line that basically all the media matters uh, for American people and all these lefty Italian experts are saying, ah, financial speculators, they must be talking about the Jews. How the f I, look, I don't know how you glean Jews from that. Okay? Financial speculators. There are people literally within the political and financial elite. Some, I'm sure, I'm sure some are Jewish. Okay? 
but there are many of them who are not. Some of them who believe in like this one world order, this uniparty, whatever the fuck it is. They're they're literally trying to turn everyone into a means to an end, and that me and that that the means of of that is being a consumer, being someone who just makes that person makes the elite more powerful, more money, wealthier, and no, and basically makes everyone else weaker. It's insane. Rory Metzger also says they also accuse us of meaning Jews whenever we say globalists. Look, that in and of itself is insane because they they literally are trying to create like another uh, good versus evil affair here. Okay, so it, it it all goes back to the Holocaust, and the reason why I say this is because. And these two, you have two camps that are basically at odds with each other. You have globalists and you have nationalists, okay? If they're calling everyone who's a nationalist a Nazi and they think that all globalists are Jews, then you get what I'm saying? They're, they're literally trying to create another good versus evil affair here, okay? It's, it's, a, little, it's, it's a little insane. Well, let's, let's listen to the rest of this. Okay. The perfect consumer, Maloney says. That's the reason why. That's why we inspire so much fear. That's why this event inspires so much fear. Because we do not want to be numbers. We will defend the value of the human being. Ah, so they're defending the values of the human being. Got to be anti-Semitic, right? Keep it going. Every single human being, except Jews, right? That they, this is how they, they're dividing. I, I know I'm not wearing a shirt right now. I feel like I should put on a shirt for this, but I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty warm right now, so I feel like I deserve to, keep, to have my shirt stay off. Okay. Okay, so for one, um, how is it possible that Maloney is using anti-Semitic dog whistles by talking about financial speculators and then literally 10 seconds later she's talking about how people should value every single human being, every single human being, not only white Christians or, uh, and then fuck everybody else, right? Again, if what this, if what Maloney in 2019 is saying here is accurate by this translation, because I can't confirm or deny that what she's saying here is accurate, um, as of course this is the internet and literally anything can be faked, uh, I at least have to take it at face value and assume that what she is saying is accurate. And that her words here were not mistranslated or at least misrepresented. So judging as such, how the fuck can we say that this woman is being anti-Semitic and specifically targeting Jews when she is literally 10 seconds later talking about the value and protecting the value of every single human being? This shit makes no sense to me. Let's keep watching. Because each of us has a unique genetic code that is unrepeatable. And like it or not, that is sacred. We will defend it. We will defend God, country, and family. Those things that disgust people so much, we will do it to defend our freedom. Because we will never be slaves and simple consumers at the mercy of financial speculators. That is our mission. That is why I came here today. Chesterton wrote more than a century ago. Let's see if I can find it. This is very much a Siraj moment right here. She's just like me, okay? No, I mean, she's not Muslim and she's not, you know, uh, a WAP, a white-ass Pakistani. But uh, very, very um, 
uh, respect the, of my culture in being a bumbling idiot. So thank you. Fires will be kindled to testify that two and two make four. Swords will be drawn to prove that leaves are green in summer. Th that time has arrived. We are ready. Thank you. Okay. Now, Preoxtius on Rumble says, I don't need subtitles, LOL. Well, certainly, that is why I came here tonight was really to just uh, give you subtitles. Um, I realize I went over an hour. Um, uh, my wife's going to kill me. So uh, let's just end with a quick hash me anything or ask me anything. I didn't actually um, have much produced tonight. I literally just grabbed a few links and stories, um, things that I just wanted to talk about tonight. Uh, obviously, th this is a BB Power Hour Plus, as in this is a special edition of a BB Power Hour J. Um, as I said before, too busy. Uh, he actually died um, the way that he lived, um, having a woman sit on his face. So, uh, Joshin says, favorite Coolio song. Um, my favorite Coolio song is, look, I can't play it here um, because I will definitely get a strike, but it is Fantastic Voyage. Um, I don't know what it is about that song. Um, it's a great sample. Uh, and the fact that they just recreate it into a 90s hip hop song, it always fucking bumps. Love that song. Uh, Jay Winkler on Rumble says, why aren't you wearing a shirt? And Preoxys says, answers for me. Thank you. It's because it's hot. Uh, Amish Paradise, Jay Winkler. <laughs> Amish Paradise is a good one, uh, specifically because Weird Al made that one. But uh, even Gangsta's Paradise was good. I also, I you know, there was a, another good song because Coolio, I don't think he produced his own beats, but... Uh, some of these beats are just really simple, right? You know, they're, they're looped up. Um, and I think he does a good job of, 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 of spitting on them. I really like, uh, there are two songs I really like, um, that he's on. One is, uh, I'll see you when you get there. And I think that was on the soundtrack to nothing to lose. That was that film with Tim Robbins and Martin Lawrence. Um, and I can't remember the sample that they used, but it was something where it was obviously orchestral, uh, lots of violin. Um, and there's another one. And this one that he was featured on is with Raz Kaz. This is from, from uh, an album uh, called Soul on Ice. It came out in like 96, 97. Um, drama. Drama. Uh, with Raz Kaz and Coolio. Uh, that's a, that's a good one. RIP Coolio. Fuzzy says, question, are you ready for Fuzzy's Fatwa to dong you this weekend like I did your boyfriend last weekend? I hope because I really need to, um, light a fire under my ass on fantasy football. Uh, Preoxtia says, my Habibis will get my name right one of these days. <laughs> and Josh says, it's Phil, right? Not Papa P. Uh, Siraj, do you think Biden is looking around for Coolio tonight? <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's look this up. Let's look this up real quick. I want to see if there is a uh, Joe Biden Coolio photo. Probably not. Doesn't look like it, which is unfortunate. Because that might answer answer that question. Now, Papa P says, "Are you going to the gym because Tom Nichols has threatened to sue you for infringing on his bitch tits look?" Nom tickles. I, um, you know, I've been going to the gym for at least a month now, and the reason why I've been going, the reason why I've only been posting photos online, um, is to see what the Habibis do in terms of memeing it, memeing it. So. Um, that's one of my favorite things. We made it to 69 minutes. Thank you for pointing that out, Rory. Uh, Habibis, I hope you all have a very good night. 
Uh, Jay and I will be back next week for an all-new Habibi Power Hour, the two of us. Although I've had so much fun, I might do these solo streams a little bit more often. Um, kind of like what I did with the list streams. Um, but yeah, I hope all of you Habibis have a wonderful rest of your week. Stay safe out there. Shana Tova to everyone uh, who's celebrating Rosh Hashanah. And uh, of course, uh, I am thinking about all of the Habibis in Florida. Uh, stay strong. Love you guys. Peace. Masadama.